May 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Samuel, chapters 29 through 31 of the Old Testament. The Philistines assembled all their troops at Aphek, while Israel camped at the spring that is in Jezreel. When the leaders of the Philistines were passing in review at the head of their units of hundreds and thousands, David and his men were passing in review in the rear with Achish. The leaders of the Philistines asked, What about these Hebrews? Achish said to the leaders of the Philistines, Isn't this David the servant of King Saul of Israel, who has been with me for quite some time? I have found no fault with him from the day of his defection until the present time. But the leaders of the Philistines became angry with him and said to him, Send the man back. Let him return to the place that you assigned him. Don't let him go down with us into the battle, for he might become our adversary in the battle. What better way to please his Lord than with the heads of these men? Isn't this David of whom they sang as they danced, Saul has struck down his thousands, but David his tens of thousands? So Achish summoned David and said to him, As surely as the Lord lives, you are an honest man, and I am glad to have you serving with me in the army. I have found no fault with you from the day that you first came to me until the present time. But in the opinion of the leaders, you are not reliable, so turn and leave in peace. You must not do anything that the leaders of the Philistines consider improper. But David said to Achish, What have I done? What have you found in your servant from the day that I first came into your presence until the present time, that I shouldn't go and fight the enemies of my lord the king? Achish replied to David, I am convinced that you are as reliable as the angel of God. However, the leaders of the Philistines have said, He must not go up with us in the battle. So get up early in the morning, along with the servants of your Lord, who have come with you. When you get up early in the morning, as soon as it is light enough to see, leave. So David and his men got up early in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. But the Philistines went up to Jezreel. On the third day, David and his men came to Ziklag. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They attacked Ziklag and burned it. They took captive the women who were in it from the youngest to the oldest, but they did not kill anyone. They simply carried them off and went on their way. When David and his men came to the city, they found it burnt. Their wives, sons, and daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the men who were with him wept loudly until they could weep no more. David's two wives had been taken captive, Ahinoam the Jezreelite and Abigail the Carmelite, Nabal's widow. David was very upset, for the men were thinking of stoning him. Each man grieved bitterly over his sons and daughters, but David drew strength from the Lord his God. Then David said to the priest, Abiathar, son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Should I pursue this raiding band? Will I overtake them? He said to them, Pursue, for you will certainly overtake them and carry out a rescue. So David went, accompanied by his six hundred men. When he came to the Wadi Besor, those who were in the rear stayed there. David and four hundred men continued the pursuit, but two hundred men, who were too exhausted to cross the Wadi Besor, stayed there. Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. They gave him bread to eat and water to drink. They gave him a slice of pressed figs and two bunches of raisins to eat. This greatly refreshed him, for he had not eaten food or drunk water for three days and three nights. David said to him, To whom do you belong, and where are you from? The young man said, I am an Egyptian, the servant of an Amalekite man. My master abandoned me when I was ill for three days. We conducted a raid on the Negev of the Carathites, on the area of Judah, and on the Negev of Caleb. We burned Ziklag. David said to him, Can you take us down to this raiding party? He said, Swear to me by God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to this raiding party. So he took David down, and they found them spread out over the land. They were eating and drinking and enjoying themselves because of all the loot they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. But David struck them down from twilight until the following evening. None of them escaped, with the exception of 400 young men who got away on camels. 
David retrieved everything the Amalekites had taken. He also rescued his two wives. There was nothing missing, whether small or great. He retrieved sons and daughters, the plunder, and everything else they had taken. David brought everything back. David took all the flocks and herds and drove them in front of the rest of the animals. People were saying, this is David's plunder. Then David approached the 200 men who had been too exhausted to go with him, those whom they had left at the Wadi Besor. They went out to meet David and the people who were with him. When David approached the people, he asked how they were doing. But all the evil and worthless men among those who had gone with David said, Since they didn't go with us, we won't give them any of the loot we retrieved. They may take only their wives and children. Let them lead them away and be gone. But David said, No, you shouldn't do this, my brothers. Look at what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and has delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Who will listen to you in this matter? The portion of the one who went down into the battle will be the same as the portion of the one who remained with the equipment. Let their portions be the same. From that time onward, it was a binding ordinance for Israel, right up to the present time. When David came to Ziklag, he sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah, who were his friends, saying, Here's a gift for you from the looting of the Lord's enemies. The gift was for those in the following locations. For those in Bethel, Ramoth Negev, and Jatur. For those in Aurora, Sifmoth, Eshtimoa, and Rachel. For those in the cities of the Jeromelites and Kenites. For those in Horma, Boreshon, Athak, and Hebron. And for those in whatever other places David and his men had traveled. Now the Philistines were fighting against Israel. The men of Israel fled from the Philistines, and many of them fell dead on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines stayed right on the heels of Saul and his sons. They struck down Saul's sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua. Saul himself was in the thick of the battle. The archers spotted him and wounded him severely. Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and stab me with it. Otherwise, these uncircumcised people will come, stab me, and torture me. But his armor bearer refused to do it, because he was very afraid. So Saul took his sword and fell on it. When his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his own sword and died with him. So Saul, his three sons, his armor bearer, and all his men died together that day. When the men of Israel who were in the valley and across the Jordan saw that the men of Israel had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned the cities and fled. The Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip loot from the corpses, they discovered Saul and his three sons lying dead on Mount Gilboa. They cut off Saul's head and stripped him of his armor. They sent messengers to announce the news in the temple of their idols and among their people throughout the surrounding land of the Philistines. They placed Saul's armor in the temple of Ashtaros and hung his corpse on the city wall of Bethshan. When the residents of Gebesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their warriors set out and traveled throughout the night. They took Saul's corpse and the corpses of his son from the city wall of Bethshan and went to Jabesh where they burnt them. They took the bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh. Then they fasted for seven days. God, I can't even imagine what David must have been feeling when they came upon the town that the king had given him. Completely destroyed. All of the people taken as captive. His two wives gone. His responsibility and allegiance to the men around him torn because they have lost everything, including their families and their wives and their kids. It must have been so devastating for David, and he must have felt so much guilt. But while everyone else was turning inward and starting to become angry and ready to take it out on David. David, as you have called us to do, David turned to you. 
not only for strength, which is important in the story, he, he drew strength from you, but more importantly, he turned to you, not his anger, he turned to you as to what he should do next. I think sometimes, God, we make so many decisions out of anger, out of emotionally charged situations that we don't do the right thing. But David turned to you for strength in dealing with his hurt and pain and guilt. And then he turned to you instead of his own anger. How do we deal with this? You and your infinite faithfulness said, I will take care of this. Here's the person who knows exactly where these people are that you're looking for. None of your family has been harmed, although it was very typical to kill everybody in, in towns that you destroyed, that you plundered. Um, not a single person had been harmed. Uh, they were able to recover everyone and every single little thing that had been taken. God, you were, you were overwhelmingly faithful to us. You ask us to be obedient. You ask us to humble ourselves before you. And when we do that, great and mighty things are given to us by you. You reward our faithfulness in you. Just like you rewarded David. And David didn't stop there. He could have after he had gone through all of that work. <laughs> getting everybody back and all of the things back. And it should have been a, a huge sigh of relief and that, that guilt taken off of him of what he had done to all these other families. He could have bought into the jealousy that was stirring up in some of the people that w went with them. We did all this work. We should get all the plunder. They can have their families, but make them go away. They were too tired. And David continues in his consistency of pursuing you and what what you would want from him and said no everybody deserves this it's equal and i think we see a, a glimpse of the justice in david that we don't quite get in you um, when you meet out justice um, <laughs> we actually think that we get to question it um, God didn't punish them enough or God hasn't punished them yet. And I know that your justice is perfect, just like everything else about you, God. I don't know where we think that we get to argue with your form of justice. But we do get to see a, a little bit of a parallel glimpse into David doing something that would be, have been uncommon back then. Doing what you had asked him to do. So I think this section, God, just teaches volumes about we will always be looked upon as as different in how our actions are because of you and that's okay in fact that's absolutely wonderful god thank you for the opportunities to receive strength from you to receive patience from you to receive answers from you as to the path that we should take sometimes so incredibly clear that it's a an Egyptian that walks right up to us and says hey you want to know where those people are thank you thank you God so much for everything you've given us even when we deserve absolutely nothing I love you very much in your son's name I pray amen <laughs>